I just want to share my thoughts on signs in the heavens because God is speaking to humanity in a mighty and powerful way through celestial signs. Now in Genesis 1:14, God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. You know, it's it's interesting that God said first, let them be for signs. You know, he could have said seasons, days, or years first, but he said let them be for signs. You know, the sun, the moon, and the stars, let them be for signs. I mean, God already knew that, you know, before he created his number one creation that um, celestial signs would be his way to communicate to humanity of something big that's about to happen into uh, the earth. So that's very interesting. And also Luke chapter 21 verses 25 through 28. Jesus says, and there shall be signs in the sun, moon, and stars, and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts filling them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draws nigh. And that's something we really need to do in these last days. We really need to look up because our redemption is drawing nigh. Now, I know that the um, the tetrad, the blood moon tetrad is not biblical. You know, four consecutive blood moons. I know that's not biblical. The only prophetic blood moon is in Joel 2.31, Acts 2.20, and Revelation 6.12. This blood moon will take place during the tribulation period when Christ opens the sixth seal. All right. Now, when Jesus said that there will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars, he already knew, he already knew that celestial signs will take place not only during the church age, but also during the tribulation period as well. Um... You can read about that, uh, the sixth seal judgment in uh, Revelation chapter 6, verses 12 through, uh, well, I'm just going to read up to, from verses 12 through 14. All right. Now, this is John, you know, when he saw Christ open the sixth seal. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven and the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. So right there, you know, once again, it will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. I mean, but with this, this is a, a God's judgment on this rebellious world during the tribulation period, the sixth seal. First, there will be a worldwide earthquake um, because uh, it says, John said in verse 14, and every, every mountain and island were moved out of their places. So that has to be a worldwide earthquake powerful earthquake and then there will be a solar a full solar eclipse um a full lunar eclipse and stars from heaven will fall onto the earth you know i just wanted to mention that because uh that you know i was really doing some studying on that and that's really interesting now the blood moon tetrad we've entered into is very interesting the next eclipse that is scheduled to transpire is a uh, total solar eclipse i don't now i don't want to speculate i don't want to speculate about this but it, it just really it really has me thinking i mean 
I don't want to speculate, but with this total solar eclipse that is coming up on the 20th of this month, this could, you know, God could be signaling to the church that the dispensation of grace is about to end. You know, the rapture of the church could happen within um, this tetrad, you know. But I'm like I said, I don't want to speculate. I don't want to put a date out there. I don't want to put a time frame. But, you know, <laughs> this is very interesting, you know. And then next month, the third blood moon would take place on the 4th and another solar eclipse, but a partial uh, solar eclipse on September 13th. And then the fourth blood moon, which is going to be a super blood moon on September 28th. You know, I love celestial signs because it's beyond the manipulation of man. It is beyond the manipulation of man. You know, man is trying to manipulate everything. You know, man is manipulating the, the food that we eat. You know, man is manipulating the, the atmosphere manipulating the weather you know man wants to change up and alter everything you know ultimately man wants to play god you know and so that's the thing i love about celestial signs because it's beyond it's far beyond man man's control you know with all the high-tech equipment that is out there you know man can't you know do the things that god can do i mean this is this is truly divine you know it's supernatural you know, a, 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 a tetrad and, and, and two solar eclipses, you know, that's definitely divine. So that's what I love about the uh, celestial signs. Now, believers need to be excited about these celestial signs because these signs won't happen again in our lifetime. I mean... This probably won't happen again for like several hundred years, you know, but it's, it's going to be far beyond our lifetime if, if it ever happens again, you know. But uh, so that's that's what makes this like very, very interesting, you know, and they all transpire on Jewish holidays, you know, which is another very interesting uh, thing about this. You know, the true and living God is letting humanity know that something big is about to happen. It may not be the rapture of the church, but these celestial signs is, is a guarantee, is an absolute guarantee that a prophetic change is coming. 